back when I started this whole project of why Transformers the movie from 1986 is cool, I only kind of sort of knew what I was doing. I've had some experience writing, filming, editing, doing voiceover work, but not much in the way of what one would consider professional. Still, I gave it my all, in every facet. And I've really, truly appreciated the wonderful feedback and discussions from so many of you viewers down in the comments. As something a little special, a little different, I thought I'd slap together this small collection of outtakes and goofs from when I'd recorded the narrations from these videos. These are just the ones I thought to keep at the time, knowing I could laugh at myself later. Believe me, there were hundreds more screw-ups than these few that you'll hear today. I hope that you'll enjoy this peek behind the curtain and learn that mistakes aren't the worst thing in the world, as long as you can laugh at yourself. So, let's take a look and see why bloopers are cool. As he scans the hole in the hull, it takes only a hot rod for a moment. <laughs> it takes hot rod only a moment to recognize the unmistakable form of a Decepticon Seeker jet standing just inside of it. We can't wait. They'll have to take care of themselves. Come on. We get one quick shot of Springer living up to his name, springing oh spring spring spring. As more and more pieces and layers of the city come together, fold in, or close off, we are shown even Megatron is having trouble penetrating these layers. Breach their defenses. Where was that? Whatever. Cup crushes Kickback's head as he jumps both the bug and the chasm following Hot Rod into the doorway, while also knocking Shrapnel all the way off, down into that chasm. And to add insult to injury, the Insecticons, and to add insult and injury to the Decept... And to add insult to injury to the Decept... <laughs> The very first thing Devastator does is approach the big laser cannon atop the tower, Blur, seem Blur seemingly already having retreated. <sighs> it's a lot of word salad, isn't it? It's interesting. Ugh, God, really? Okay. <clears throat> It's interesting to it's interesting to know that both it's interesting to know that both Galvatron and Unicron know that the Matrix isn't on Cybertron at all, but back on Earth. I think I've lost my voice for the day. <laughs> Crap. My fellow Decepticons, as your new leader, I As the unknown jet approaches at top speed in full attack position. Cutting straight down the middle of the crowd of attendees, they scattering aside from... The, what? They scattering them aside? <laughs> okay, let's go change that real quick. Yet I wonder at the decision to bring Daniel along, and I have to think it's because of Spike and Daniel's desire to help rescue him that the Autobots allow him to join the mission. I mean, the real reason he's part of the main cast and so they have... I mean, the real reason he's part of the main cast and is... What? Who writes this crap? I always assumed that, I'm judging by the way the shuttle crashed, everyone on board was thrown out or otherwise made it to some ejection module or other emergency exit. The Dinobots at least were nor... The Dinobots at least are nor... The Dinobots at least are nowhere near as... The Dinobots at least... Stop, Mike. The Dinobots at least are nowhere near as they were apparently... Uh, 
closer towards the aft section of the shuttle. The Dinobots, at least, are nowhere near by... Okay, let's just rewrite this. <laughs> can I help, too? It's rough out there, kid. I think Daniel can make himself useful with this. It was Spike's exosuit. Dad's exosuit. He told me all about it. Here, try it on. Daniel jumps and moves with glee as R.C. sets it down for him, and Springer hoists him up from behind and gently lowers him through the cone dome. And Springer hoists him up from behind and gently lowers him through the cone dome on it. The cone, the coned dome on. T- I'm I'm gonna take a break. Springer folds his arms behind, and R.C. encourages Daniel with a caring motherly tone as one would encourage a toddler or like a kid riding to learn a bike. I, or a kid learning to ride a bike. Daniel? This must be the jerk capital of the universe. Stop thief, or stop thief, is the first words we hear spoken by these newly revealed inhabitants of this planet of junk, these junk yawns. It would seem they don't take kindly to outsiders pilfering their carefully curated products. You know Eric Idle is an Australian, don't you, Mike? <laughs> it would seem these it would seem they don't take kindly to outsiders pilfering their carefully curated products. I don't know if that's any better. You get the idea that they've been encountering dangerous gambits and terrifying creatures during their whole journey through this world. But they're the freaking Dinobots, especially after their dino modes. Especially in their dino modes, there's virtually nothing that can hurt them. Nothing tougher than they are. As individuals, they're (laughs) invisible. They're invisible, I wrote. As individuals, they're (laughs) invisible. Shoot. For their part, the Junkions run past past Springer, past Springer. Steady as she goes, Bob. Hot Rod leads the way out of the ship with close cup behind, with cup, with cup close behind. Ultra Magnus rolls up to stand on wobbly legs as he takes in the sight of all his Autobots safe and sound in front of him, all ecstatically happy to see him. Springer coming forward to take him by the arm and support and... What? (laughs) Springer coming forward to take him by the arm and support and a hearty welcome. Oh, okay. His mouth does not move as he speaks, more that his presence shakes through all immediate existence as his... As he conveys his words through sheer power. Hot Rod grabs hold of it as it hangs before him, and it shimmers brightly in that pivotal moment. Galvatron is shocked. And I lost my place in the script. Galvatron is shocked at this reaction from the Matrix, yet is un... You know what? We'll just start over. Transformers from Cybertron, many of whom have lived for millions of years, have often wondered at the adaptive abilities of humans and how much they seem to be able to accomplish within such minuscule lifespans when compared to their own longevity.
In that regard, human innovation is fairly impressive, even to the Transformers, especially to the especially to the Decepticons. This scene gives us a lot with very little. Their dialogue makes clear in the way they speak to each other that Gregory and Jessica's father, Morgan, <laughs> Jessica's father, Morgan, Mark Morgan, attorney at law, as the ending of Dark Awakening, where we last saw Optimus, despite a small blink and you'll miss it reuse of animation from that episode. In Dark Awakening, the ship aimed at Optimus. No, that's okay, that's backwards. In Dark Awakening, the ship Optimus aimed at the Quintessons. No, we just want to help. How? By turning my daughter into a robot? Dad, they made it so I could walk again. We thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? At my daughter becoming a blasted machine? Hotspot is genuinely sharked at Mark's res- sharked at Mark <laughs> sharked at Mark's response. <laughs> He's genuinely sharked. Slingshot! Transform into Superior! Throttlebots! Transform! And finally, last but not least, Blur, Bumblebee, Steeljaw, and Wheelie! Transform! Two full combiner teams, a squad of Throttlebots, and a few extra troops like Bumblebee, Wheelie, Blur, and Steeljaw should be more than enough to help rescue... Optimus Prime's body from a pair of humans, no matter what trap they have set for the Autobots. This is my after karaoke voice. After Galvatron hears this news, he's not so alarmed by it. <clears throat> he's not so alarmed by it as he seemed to be in Dark Awakening, only determined to make sure he finishes what he started that day in Autobot City. It's over. Against Magnus, the aerial bots, even with their minds scrambled by spores, know their best shot to beat him is to merge together into the mighty Superion. Doing so forces Superion to crunch through the ceiling to where he sees Defensor and sets his sights on the Protectobot Gestalt instead. Gestalt in- instead. Gestalt instead. That's hard. They cannot take the strain. Rekgar, any hope that Junkions can repair him? He's dead, Jim. Who built Optimus in the first place? Play where she says, Who built Optimus in the first place? And Rodimus is all like, Ooh, the Quintessons. Which is not true. To find themselves gaining consciousness after going up against Superion would come as a surprise to most of them. Cup seemed to lose his place in the script while he was reading it. There it is. (laughs) Cup seemed to know going into that situation that it could mean the death of some of his squad, if not all of them. No problem, sister. We'll just take it back. What a perfect reaction from a stalwart old soldier like Cup. All you had to do is say they gotta go bust through some cons. (laughs) Fart. Ow. We have to get out of here! Galvatron! Which way? This way! But first! Galvatron once more turns his power into his powerful cannon mode. Okay. Galvatron once more turns into his powerful cannon mode. The Throttlebots aren't in this for a demolition derby. They pepper Rodimus with laser fire, trying to blow him apart. Rodimus proves to be too tough for that, and too fast, as he shows them a thing or two about how to be Turbo Revan... <clears throat> There's some phlegm. Turbo Revan Young Punks. Optimus decides it's time to truly put this new metal coating to the test, and get up and close... and get up close and personal with Hot Rod. And get up close and personal with Hot Rod. That, I did it again. And get up close and personal with Rodimus.
We're shown a news broadcast catching us up on the status of the rest of the world, of how the Autobots and Decepticons have already spread this virus around the globe, and how this virus has now even begun to spread throughout humanity. Good enough anyway? Okay, whenever you're ready. I'm Bonnie Carson with KSUN-TV. The hate plague, as it's come to be known, is spreading like wildfire across our world. How many of us will be infected? Is there any cure? And if not, when will the plague end? And will any... It's okay, go ahead. And will any of us be left alive to see that day? How do you say mango in Spanish? Mango. Mango? That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Okay, whenever you're, like I say, go ahead and with, just fill the despair, but also, you know, slow it down just a little bit and mm -hmm. take your time with it. Go ahead. How many of us will be infected? Is there any cure? And if not, when will the plague end? And will any of us be left alive to see that day? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> whenever, uh, we got, okay, let, let's get through. I'm not